Hi again, it's Pastor Brian, and I'm back with you for our video devotionals, our video Bible studies from the book of Philippians. Thank you for bearing with me as I took a hiatus in order to be with my dad in hospice over the last, well, most of the days of June here. Uh, and as we celebrated his life and commended him to God last Saturday in my hometown of Blue Earth, Minnesota, Dad lived a long, full life, a life of faith. And I'm freshly reminded of being part of the communion of saints in heaven and on earth, the communion of saints that is unbounded by death, unbounded by denominational label, unbounded by race, unbounded by continent or nation. We are those who seek to follow Jesus Christ. And so I come to you today from the book of Philippians. You'll recall that we uh, were in the second chapter of Philippians and just starting out. And I want to continue with that as Paul is writing from jail, remember, writing from a Roman jail, the, one of the jails of the empire. And he's saying this to the sisters and brothers in the Philippian house churches. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, Paul says, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, how different this is from the mighty Roman Empire, the mighty Roman Caesar, the mighty Roman Emperor. This Jesus took the form of a servant. Being born in human likeness, Paul writes. This Jesus, this Christ sits where we sit, feels what we feel weeps when we weep, laughs with us as we laugh. Being born in human likeness, we read, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, this is not some triumphal, a triumphalistic kind of thing where we say, rah, rah, yea, for our side. We as Christians are better than everyone else. Rather, this Jesus Christ is grace personified, love and truth and justice personified. And in these days when we are claiming anew as the United Methodist Church and here at Centennial United Methodist Church, but as a denomination, along with Christians of other labels, when we are claiming that we are called to anti-racism, I think it's important to put this, uh, this passage from Philippians chapter two about Jesus being Lord, put it in the context of the prophet Isaiah from the Hebrew scriptures, the 42nd chapter, which is 
a chapter, a passage that Christians have long, long looked to for understanding who this Christ is, who this Jesus is. It's a beloved passage, and I want you to notice the repetition of a particular word in this passage because it describes who this Jesus is and who we are called to be as Jesus people in the 21st century, here in 2020, the month of June, and moving forward. Isaiah 42, verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him he will bring forth, forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. This is speaking of the gentleness of this, of this servant, you see. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. Oh, that we'd have such a heart for one another as neighbors, for one another of every color one another who are marginalized. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. I want to point out once again that this journey with Christ as Christians, is an inward journey of prayer, of compassion, and it's an outward journey of worship together and seeking justice for all God's children in our world, in our neighborhoods, in our cities today. I pray that we will support each other in that endeavor. Keep me in your prayers, and I keep you in my prayers as we are church together, as, as we are neighbors together, seeking a better world. Whatever your faith, whatever uh, way in which you relate to God, in which you relate to God's world, we're in this together. Take care and God bless.